Well, hey guys, if you're new here, I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about hair loss treatments that actually work for pattern hair loss in men and women. Now, when it comes to treating hair loss, there's no cure and there's no single one best treatment. A theme you'll notice throughout this video as I go through the different treatments is that many treatments can be used alongside other treatments. And in many cases, combinations of treatments yield the best results. I am a huge fan of the iRestore Professional hair regrowth system. It is low level laser therapy that you can do at home. And I'm gonna talk about it later in this video, but I wanted to thank iRestore for sponsoring today's video. What is pattern hair loss? Otherwise known as androgenetic alopecia, it can happen in men and women. And it's due to a genetic sensitivity of the hair follicle to the androgens, resulting in the hair turning into a little baby vellus hair and eventual balding. Before considering any type of treatment, whether it's right or wrong for you, it's very important to see a board certified dermatologist to get an accurate diagnosis because there are many other types of hair loss out there. And in many cases, the treatments I'm talking about in this video, they're not gonna work for those other types of hair loss. So getting the right diagnosis is imperative. All right. The All first right. treatment you're probably well aware of if you've been dealing with pattern hair loss is minoxidil. It's sold over the counter. It's an FDA approved treatment for pattern hair loss in both with men and women. Minoxidil is something that you can apply to the scalp twice a day. And the way it works is to bring in more blood flow and growth factors to those follicles and perhaps help to wake them back up, those dormant follicles, and is well established to improve hair growth, hair thickness, hair density, and the strength of the hairs themselves. Now, it takes roughly about six months before you start seeing results. And as with any hair loss treatment, it's not a cure, so you have to keep using it indefinitely. And when you stop using it, the hair that grew while you were on minoxidil will fall out and your hair will go back to the state it would have been in had you never used minoxidil. You know, a lot of people who try out topical minoxidil, they get really frustrated when they stop it, they feel as though their hair loss has worsened. It hasn't, it's just that minoxidil was stimulating some of those follicles temporarily while the hair loss process still ensued. So that's an expectation to have upfront. Side effects of topical minoxidil most commonly include irritation. And one thing that throws people for a curve, if you're not familiar with it, is that in the beginning, it also increases the number of sh shedding hairs. So basically it pushes the hairs, more of the hairs into the shedding phase. That alarms people, they see their hair coming out in clumps, but don't be alarmed, that's not permanent hair loss. It's just changing the hair cycle around a bit more to get more follicles in the growing phase. And as a result, you get some shedding in the beginning. But by about six months, you should start seeing results. Now, minoxidil applied to the scalp, it requires an enzyme in your follicle called a sulfotransferase to convert it to its active form. For whatever reason, some people may not have good levels of that enzyme and don't respond well to topical minoxidil. So not everybody actually sees good results and it can be very frustrating. So a lot of people give up on it, you know, they don't wanna keep doing something, especially if they're not seeing results. Now that's minoxidil that you apply to your scalp, but there's also a pill form of minoxidil. It's a blood pressure pill, but in low doses, it can actually increase hair growth. I have a video talking more in detail about it. So I'll link that down below in the description box, but oral minoxidil can result in increased hair growth, increased hair thickness, and side effects at the doses used for hair loss are typically mild, believe it or not, hypertrichosis, meaning excess hair growth, elsewhere where you might not want it like your face. It also can cause low blood pressure. I mean, it's a blood pressure medication and it can cause a little bit of dizziness when you go from lying down to standing up. It also can um, cause lower extremity swelling, blood pressure changes and changes on EKG, which is a test used to monitor the electrical rhythm in the heart. All right, moving on. The second medication is for pattern hair loss in men, and that is finasteride. It's actually FDA approved for the treatment of pattern hair loss in men. Finasteride is a medication that inhibits the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. That is the enzyme that takes the male hormone testosterone to a more potent form of testosterone, and it's that more potent form that causes the hair follicles to miniaturize. Finasteride can put a halt to that. There's another similar medication that also inhibits that enzyme, called dutasteride. They sound very similar. Finasteride is the one that is most well-researched and most often used 
for the treatment of powdered hair loss, but dutasteride sometimes is used as well. Side effects that you may experience with either finasteride or dutasteride include breast tenderness or swelling, erectile dysfunction, impotence, depression. With these medications, it takes about six months to start seeing results. And like minoxidil, you have to keep taking it. Once you stop, the hair that you grew will just fall out and will go back to how it would have been had you never used the medication. So many men are not too keen on taking a medication that they have to take it indefinitely, especially if it may potentially have these side effects that I've mentioned. But it is a viable and well-used treatment for pattern hair loss in men. Now in women, we have spironolactone. This is a diuretic and it actually works to inhibit the androgen receptor. Because remember, the follicle is sensitive to those hormones and spironolactone interferes with that signaling and can result in slowing down of the hair loss process and hair regrowth. Side effects that can occur with spironolactone include breast tenderness, menstrual irregularity, and because it is a diuretic, it can make you a little dizzy if you go abruptly from lying down to standing up. And because it's a diuretic, you may notice that you go to the bathroom a little bit more frequently. Those side effects typically are mild. I have videos, as a side note, talking about spironolactone as a treatment for acne. So another you know, benefit of taking spironolactone is if you happen to have acne, you may appreciate improvement in that. But the doses that we use to treat hair loss are much higher, so the side effects that I've described here are a little bit more, are gonna be more common when we're using it to treat hair loss than when we're using it to treat acne. Spironolactone is not safe in pregnancy, so if you are contemplating pregnancy or you you know, are pregnant, this would not be a treatment option. Ketoconazole 2% shampoo. Whoa, isn't that a dandruff shampoo? Didn't you mention that in your dandruff shampoo video? Yes, it is a dandruff shampoo. But ketoconazole 2% shampoo has been shown actually to be effective for male pattern hair loss, as effective as minoxidil. And studies show that using ketoconazole shampoo every four to five days, lathering it to the scalp, leaving it on the scalp for roughly three to five minutes, and then rinsing it out, can be effective for slowing down the hair loss process. How the heck would that work? Well, ketoconazole actually can inhibit that 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Ketoconazole also is antifungal. It targets that little yeast that lives in everyone's scalp. That's how it targets dandruff and treats dandruff. So it has the potential to reduce any inflammation as a result of that yeast. And that is another mechanism by which it may improve the hair loss process and help out with pattern hair loss. Now, it's not an FDA approved treatment for pattern hair loss. Ketoconazole 2% shampoo is available by prescription only. Now, over the counter, you can buy Nizoral shampoo, which is ketoconazole 1% but likely the 2% strength is more effective. However, we don't have any studies comparing the two side by side. Platelet-rich plasma, otherwise known as PRP. What is PRP, platelet-rich plasma? Well, platelets are a component in our blood system responsible for clotting, and they're rich in growth factors and proteins that when isolated from your blood and delivered to the hair follicle may help in restoring hair follicle health, giving you better responses to other hair loss treatment and hair regrowth. How does it work? Well, you go to a dermatologist, they take some of your blood, they spin it down, and then they in introduce that into your scalp. A lot of studies do suggest that it is in fact an effective treatment for pattern hair loss in men and women. One limitation of the research that we have on PRP for hair loss is that the protocols vary in each study. So it's very difficult to come up with a standardized approach to PRP for hair loss. Some people don't find it to be effective. You need multiple treatments over time, usually every three to six months to maintain those results. And it's not inexpensive, but it is an option. It's being offered at a lot of hair loss clinics. And some people, it really makes, seems to make a difference for their hair regrowing. Microneedling, otherwise known as collagen induction therapy, it is basically creating little micro injury zones that stimulate healing pathways that may help with restoring the health of the hair follicle. It's used to deliver PRP, and it also may enhance uptake of topical minoxidil. Of course, with that comes an increased risk of irritation. Minoxidil is typically irritating for many people. And when you're getting enhanced penetration, you are more likely to develop more irritation. What about at-home microneedling? Yes, microneedling at home is something you've probably heard about. You can buy these tools. Unfortunately, 
they have many limitations and they're not recommended for a variety of reasons. First of all, you run the risk of an infection. When you're talking about treating the scalp, it is difficult to get certain areas. You're not going to be able to see the treated area like somebody doing it for you would. You can't really control the depth as well. You're at risk for an infection and you're at risk for something called foreign body granuloma. And all of those things can end up worsening your hair loss. So I personally do not recommend at-home microneedling. All right, and then you have hair transplant surgery. What the heck? Yes, you can have other hair follicles from elsewhere transplanted to the area of thinning and those hair follicles can grow healthy hair. It requires you to have a reservoir of healthy hair follicles somewhere else on like your scalp, for example. Um, the back of the scalp is the most common area. This procedure takes anywhere from four to eight hours. The outcome depends on the health of your other follicles and it also depends on your total body health. It also depends on the skill of the transplant surgeon. So this is something that you really want to care carefully consider. So I don't recommend shopping around for the best deal because the outcome really depends on the skill set of the surgeon and their expertise. So make sure that you see somebody who has, who knows what they're doing. There are a lot of scammers out there and then you can end up with graft failure, infection, so be very careful of who you go to. With hair transplant surgery, they're gonna take, it takes about four to eight hours. You are awake during the procedure, a local anesthetic is used to numb the area, follicles are harvested either individually or as a strip, and then they are tra transplanted to the area of thinning. You'll start to see results from a hair transplant around six to nine months after the procedure, but for some people it takes 12 months. It's important to know with hair transplant that about two to eight weeks after the procedure, the transplanted hairs, they actually fall out, and that may alarm you, but it is to be expected, and a new healthy hair will grow. It just takes you know, anywhere from six months to a year to start seeing that regrowth. So you have to be patient with it. It is an expensive procedure. So for that reason, I don't recommend shopping around for the best deal because the outcome is largely dependent on the skill of the operating surgeons. Okay. Low-level laser therapy, it is supported by randomized controlled trials for the treatment of pattern hair loss in men and women. One advantage of low-level laser therapy is that it can be used in conjunction with other hair loss treatments, minoxidil, medications, hair transplant, all of the procedures that I mentioned, you can use in conjunction with low-level laser therapy. How the heck does it work? By something called photobiomodulation, basically the delivery of light, that energy is harvested by those follicles. It brings in growth factors and increased blood flow to the follicle to nourish and revitalize it, allowing for hair regrowth. Low-level laser therapy can lead to an improvement not only in hair thickness, but hair density and get you hair regrowth. It's a great option in many people who do not see results with say topical minoxidil, but it can be used in conjunction with topical minoxidil. So if you got less than ideal results with minoxidil, using it alongside low-level laser therapy may get you to a point where you are happy. Now, low-level laser therapy is something that you can do at home, and a lot of people appreciate that convenience aspect of it. There are a lot of devices on the market, some of which are FDA cleared. So the one I use and recommend is the iRestore Professional Hair Regrowth System. This is an FDA cleared hair regrowth device. It combines over 282 lasers and LEDs. And the reason having a combination of lasers and LEDs is advantageous is that it really allows for not only delivery of energy more directly to the follicles, but also kind of the surrounding area of the scalp to really get good blood flow into the scalp, nourish those follicles and bring in those growth factors. It really covers a good territory of the scalp. You know, they have some that are handheld, which I just find very awkward. They have others that, you know, are more like a headband that miss areas. So this really gives you very good coverage and it stays in very close proximity to the scalp. It's a hands-free way to do low-level laser therapy. So for somebody like myself, who's always multitasking, this is great. I can put it on and the 25 minutes flies by. So you can do it 
Every other day for 25 minutes is the best way to get results. Now, like any hair loss treatment, it takes time to see results. You can start seeing results. Some people start seeing results in as early as three months, but honestly, it's usually about six to nine months. By a year, you should know if this is going to work for you or not. So I suggest if you're going to invest in low-level laser therapy, I suggest taking a before photograph to document your progress and take a photograph maybe you know every couple of months while you're using it to see your progress. And by, by 10, 11 months, you should really see a difference. If you don't, then you know it's not working for you. It doesn't work for everyone. So it may not work for all people, but it is an effective evidence-based way for helping with hair growth and pattern hair loss in both men and women. And it's a particularly ideal option for those of you who like the idea of doing something from the comfort of your own home. Our store also has a 12 month money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied with your results, you can get your money back and you should know by 12 months if this is gonna be effective for you. So again, take those photographs, that is key. I've been using it myself for a couple of years now actually, and I really do notice an improvement in the thickness and density of my hair. And I'm always multitasking in the evening, so it's just really convenient for me to do at home. And I've also appreciated less overall hair shedding, fewer hairs in the drain. But right now, iRestore is having an amazing sale. And if you use the link in my description box and my code, you can save like hundreds off of this. So definitely take advantage of it. And thank you, iRestore, for sponsoring today's video. Now, you may be wondering about other things like oils, supplements. I want you to check out some of my other videos on those things for hair loss. I'm gonna link them down below in the description box. And on the end slate is gonna be my video on the best oils for hair growth. So check that out if you are interested in things like pumpkin seed oil and rosemary oil. I talk all about that in that video. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.